Hey folks, Tim here from Amplify. I'm going to take a couple of sessions to go through trading psychology and how we should think about trading and how trading psychology and indeed our own psychology really becomes the overriding factor when it comes to being consistent as a trader. And I'm talking about early stage consistency all the way through to you know, high performance consistency. So really trading psychology I've seen can affect, does affect um, trainees all the way through to seasoned senior traders. You know, it, it's a huge topic. So we're gonna do a, a couple of sessions on this. This is session one. This is really, you know, labeled starting out, losing out and why, okay? So, you know, we've all had that experience from when we started trading so let me get into this. My name is Tim Duggan. I've been working with Amplify really from around 2017 till now. Um, I'm a senior trader and mentor to uh, the trainees, but more so the uh, sort of more senior traders uh, that are working with the firm. Uh, I used to work with Genesis Capital in Australia as a trader. Then before that, Geneva Trading, who have offices in uh, Chicago and Dublin. And you can find me on Twitter, Tim Dug. So what I wanted to start this all off with, right, is a, is a fantastic quote from Phil Helmuth, who uh, this guy has won 15 World Series of Poker bracelets. Um, he's an amazing poker player. And I came across this quote, actually. Uh, I think I heard him say this in an interview. And then I actually went and read his book called Poker Brat. But it just rang true with me so much when it, when it came to understanding trading and my experience of trading and, and what I see with a lot of the traders that I work very closely with from, from starting out traders um, to very senior and experienced traders. And the quote is, you know, luck is getting dealt a good set of cards. Skill is knowing how and when, how and when to bet. All right. That is really, really important. You know, getting the tools uh, handed to you, getting you know, capital, um, getting to sit in the seat and getting just exposed to markets. That's all the easy stuff, you know, but, it, the, the, but doing it skillfully, you know, doing something with all those tools, well, you have to know how and when to apply them, right? So we're gonna go through some, a lot of this already. Okay, so, in an introduction to trading psychology, okay, we all know about the Brett Steenbargers and, you know, uh, what was, was uh, the other book, uh, Trading in the Zone, and, you know, really good books, fantastic stuff. Uh, you know, Steenbarger, amazing, amazing guy. Uh, I've, I've read a lot of his stuff. But really, I want to look at a few broad topics here, okay? What, you know, we, like, we need to look at what we don't know, what, why we are scared, okay, and then really how come the more we know the more we seem to lose money okay and you know this is a, a direct question from a starting out trader that i was doing a little bit of work with earlier this year you know uh, they had turned around to me and said it seems like the more i've i've i know now and i'm educated the more i just can't really make a decision and this is really difficult uh, whereas when I first started trading, uh, I was just like, you know, they were just looking at the ladder and they were like, this is really easy. You know, it's just like a computer game. <laughs> and I kind of really thought a lot about that. Right. So, you know, why is psychology so important? Well, really, when it comes down to it, after you learn how to place orders, how to use the trading software, connect to the market, uh, what's support and resistance, how to find support and resistance, um, you know, economic data events, da 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 da. Um, you then have this information that you've learned and you're now let loose to do something with it. Okay. So what, what the disconnect is, is that people sort of, you know, our minds are very busy spaces. And then when we're confronted with the markets, information, news, 
breaking breaking news data coming out everything we find it so hard to consolidate everything in our mind and to sort of in a, in a way re, out of reflex categorize what we should be doing and what we shouldn't be doing you know and, and instead there's this raw impulsive part of us that just kind of wants to click the button right you know long short long short short long short long whatever you know so really making money in the markets is is pretty easy right it's pretty easy but you know we've all we've all had those early trades where you get in goes on side like instantly and you get out for you know some whatever tick amount of profit and you think wow this is easy and it can be easy all right it can be easy but being consistent about that and compounding that you know trade on trade uh, day on day week on week month on month is really really hard really hard so you know there's there's a there's a great book called thinking in bats from annie duke an amazing woman uh professional poker player uh, won the world series poker uh once i think her brother had won it before her and she has this book uh, thinking of bats and she she kind of talks about the resulting process that because you make a decision to do a and you you get a result of x well if you get a negative result does this mean that the decision in itself was a bad decision in the first place? And so she learned to disconnect her good decisions uh, or well, decisions in themselves from the results in themselves, because a good decision uh, can be completely blown out of the water by the randomness of, of poker for example. And, th and that does not really change when it comes to a lot of different things. And Annie talks a lot about um, a Super Bowl final um, a couple of years ago, where the, there was, you know, there was a, there was a pretty uh, bad decision uh, made by the coach in the final seconds of the game that could have won, won the game for the team. Anyway, go on YouTube, have a look at it. Um, she's, she's well worth having a listen to. So let's move on from here. In our journey to, you know, be a better trader, to know what we need to know and then work on that, we need to kind of be aware of a couple of things. And, you know, the Jahari window kind of highlights this a little bit. You know, you have sector one as it's, it's, you know, something and everyone else knows something. This is sort of public knowledge, right? And then in sector two, it's like, well, everyone else knows something, but you don't know that thing, right? And this is called the blind spot or the blind self. You know, these are things that, um, you know, for example, you walk out of the house in the morning and your hair is like sticking straight up off your head. And well, everyone else can see that, but you can't see that, right? So you got a blind spot that your has, hair is sticking right up. Very plain example. Then you have the hidden self in that, you know, you know something, but nobody else knows something. Okay. Um, and that's sort of like your private uh, mind, if you like. And then it comes to section four is the unconscious self. You know, you don't know it and nobody else knows it. Okay. But as we go forward in this, in the, in this series of, of trading psychology sessions, we're going to be looking at what we, what we discover in sections two and sections four. Okay. Because really, to me, you can fill in section two here by learning education, okay, being aware of things, you know, being aware of a technical aspect of your trading software, or being aware of micro macro or micro economic events and impacts and data on the markets. Okay, but when it comes to section four, this is where we, we, you know, it's a complete uh, vacuum of knowledge. And so we have to kind of go into discovery mode here and push ourselves to find out things, okay? And to ask questions of ourselves, you know, am I doing this because I'm scared? Am I stopping out of uh, 
trades too quickly um, because I'm looking at my PL all the time. You know, and you have to ask your question, yourself these questions. And you can use software like TraderView or um, you know, Edgewonk um, to kind of you, you know, use the maths to help you figure these things out, right? Um, but let, let, let's move on from here, right? Okay, so we have to kind of drop a lot of baggage that we have, okay? Because you know, when we come to trading, okay, we have, you know, we're, we're probably at a minimum 16 or 18 years old, okay? at a minimum. Maybe we're in our mid 20s, mid 30s, mid 40s, 50s, 60s, who knows, okay? But the point is, the baggage is, is that we have this faulty way of thinking. We kind of think about, you know, okay, this is a job. So therefore I clock in, I clock out and I make the money. Okay. That's not really what it is. We have to think differently, um, you know, about uh, ourselves and what we want to do and how long that might take and what we need to know in order to feel comfortable doing this job of being a trader. Um, you know, there's a, there's a huge amount that we don't know. I mean, and when we are aware of that as, a, as an early stage trader, that causes a huge amount of fear, okay? And, and that fear inhibits us from being able to be comfortable with the fact that we're putting money at work, we're putting risk on, we're taking trades. Because really underneath that in our subconscious, we're sitting there thinking, okay, I actually don't really know what I'm doing. There are definitely, you know, hundreds of more people in this market right now who know tons more than I do. Okay. So as we want to get better as a trader and as we educate ourselves as a trader, we need to start to let go of that concept. Okay. You know, if, if you've, if you've educated yourself a lot about the markets, and you have taken time to keep yourself in the markets and learn how markets move, why they move, where they move to. Um, you know, you have to start letting go of that and um, that uncertain part of you that is fearful. Because, you know, I talked about this with my mentees only last week. I said, you know, at this point, you, you don't you should not be sitting in your in your in your trading seat feeling at a deficit of competent knowledge to do your job. You, I said, you know what to do. Your job now is to just do that, just to do what you know, okay? So you need to start to let go of that fear as you educate yourself about markets, how they move, why they move, um, you know, all the different markets there are and all the different edges there are to trade these markets. And then another thing is really to just be fluid as well. So we need to start to be open to that learning, right? And, you know, what happens is when people start to, you know, trade, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they've opened up account on their own. It's the blood, sweat and tears phase, as I call it, where you, you're, you're just messing around and not putting too much capital at risk, but you are sort of, sort of trying to teach yourself something, right? And then when your eyes are open to actually, there's a lot to learn out there. There's a lot of books. There's a lot of gurus, if you like. Um, you know, then you start to say, well, I, I actually want to, I want it all right now in my head. And then I can start to figure this all out, right? And that can be kind of a dangerous thing, okay? So yeah, the search is on. So what, what happens typically now is that there's an indicator frenzy. I was speaking with a brand new trader. So someone who had just started trading about a month ago, um, two weeks ago, I was talking to them and they, they'd been trading for about a month at that point. And, um, you know, they wanted to just have a quick chat in the, in the trading room. So we jumped on a, on a quick uh, video call and I, and I said, oh, can you, share your screen because they were interested in how I would do simple support and resistance analysis on any market. And then they shared their screen with me and I could just see about 10 different moving averages, the four hour bar chart, 10 different moving averages, 
there were pivot points for every single day going back for like 80 days and it's just like okay what how how do you trade what how do you find signals what is your edge and they said well i just i just kind of monitor the market so the point is is that you go on this indicator frenzy right you you go look you're like wow stochastics macd's moving average 20 20 day moving average 100 day moving average de- you know death crosses um all this sort of stuff right and the positive thing is you know this will start you get start you reading a lot of books okay and there are a lot of fantastic books out there um on trading i mean one good trade is fantastic and mike balafiore and the guys in smb capital are cool guys um there's a japanese candlestick charting techniques is a fantastic book I, re- I i highly recommend that that is that is definitely one of the books that i would read um you know probably try and read once a year um you know reminiscence of a stock operator uh, not a technical book but uh, an interesting sort of uh, anecdotal story about it, one of the one of the greater traders of the of the 20th century um you know you can get in contact with me if you want uh, you know to have a recommendation for a couple of books let's let's not get sidetracked there you then start looking at, on youtube there's multiple gurus there's guys you know creaming at making you know 200 grand a day and you know that they just it just seems to be so easy and then you want to learn how they trade and you know and you're getting scatterbombed with information from multiple sources you know and and what you don't realize is that you you actually are ignorant to edge and ignorant to you know not in a bad way you know ignorant is a hard word but um you're you're sort of sitting there just exposing your brain and learning lots and lots and lots right and this is good you know you're 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 getting some form of information in there but it's not focused okay and the attention is not directional okay um but you are thirsty for edge you're thirsty really it for the holy grail you think wow there's i got the i got this charting package there's two thousand different indicators in here you know i just download think or swim i think that does have about two thousand indicators in it and you think wow okay in here there's got to be some combination of indicators or maybe just one whereby you know i can i can find the holy grail and just like kill markets all day every day five days a week well hey what the news is there is no holy grail there isn't one sorry guys and girls but there there isn't one i don't know what to tell you there is no holy grail there is just clean concise thinking and a calm mind and and you know nothing beats educating yourself about how the markets work how they move and why they move and then we're going to really come to the, to what i would call the holy grail at the end of this video okay so stay tuned okay so here we'll go through the journey right of 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 learning and starting to trade right so it's i call this the valley of loss okay so you know here's where you you put on trades right you take you take loads of trades maybe you start off as a as a you know a close card poker player where you you know you 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 like picking uh, trades quite well okay and you seem to pick them quite well okay and then you get exposed to some other information or ways of trading in the markets and uh you know either which way your confidence level against your trades is actually paper thin okay if you were in a trade and i was to come along and say i'm uh, i'm actually on the other side of that i think this market's going down whereas you're like oh i'm long this market and it's, i don't know it's 10 ticks on side uh, and i'll go okay and then i could just walk away I, I i'd say 90 80 to 90 percent of the time you're going to close out that trade or at least half of the position and that's because you might feel that like you know someone beside you or someone talking on a youtube video knows more than you do right 
well, we need to trust in ourselves and we need to build ourselves up in that trust, as I was saying earlier in, in this session. And we frantically are using these indicators. I mean, when I started trading and found Edge, I was trading a MACD histogram uh, Edge. And I don't think I was using any stochastics for the momentum on it, but um, I probably wasn't. But it was just MACD histograms and um, looking for a two, two bar degradation. Um, I can talk to you further about that if you want, but it's a very, very simple edge and it's very inconsistent. Um, so, but the point is we're frantically looking and then we start to over trade and then we start to, you know, trade into a rundown, into a deficit, you know, and we're thinking, well, why isn't this working? My first couple of trades that I took are, were fantastic and I, I like doubled my account. I, I triple my account but you know what's what's going wrong now oh no it's fine i'll just keep trading it's, it's bound to come back i'm bound to make money i got this and the fact of the matter is you've got you've got no risk management and no edge right and and what happens is, is you probably move a stop or take a too big a loss your stop is just too far away from your entry and what happens is you get a huge emotional reaction to that right you take a loss of x amount of dollars on one of these trades and then you enter into this valley of loss in your mind and and you know you're so down on yourself right so let's move on here because what happens is you beat yourself up you talk negatively about yourself you know and, and what happens is you, you need to be aware of this if 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 you have taken big losses and ref, well then ref, use this sort of session to reflect on this right um it colors your entire world view Okay, when you take these big losses because you immediately are bewildered and you lose all faith in yourself you feel incredibly stupid you feel almost frightened to tell anyone or your significant other for example and i don't recommend that you hide these things in fact you should celebrate these things because when you do that you will only at that point start to grow so with the traders that i mentor um you know i say to them i was like listen we're, we're going to be on sim you've been trading cash for a whole while now but you're going to be on sim for four weeks while we go through this process and it, it, essentially i don't want them to be subjected to more of these big emotional uh experiences when they should actually be learning something from from what i'm teaching them about the markets technical stuff and setups and whatnot and we want to avoid that but i say to them never please lie to me or hide a bad trade from me if, whether on the sim or when we're on cash i can't help you if you take a loss and you hide it from me or if you have a string of really shit bad trades i don't want you to hide it from me because we then can't get better you can't get better and i can't help you Okay, so we need to put these warts and all out in the, in the cold light of day, and that's when we can start to fix them. Okay, and for you at home, you, this is what you should do as well. As soon as you air these things, you can start to grow from that point as a trader. Um, and what happens is, is when you take these losses, you, you're no longer objective about the markets, risk and reward. You know, you, you might be getting into, you know, one to one risk reward trades. And what and then and you might be actually losing like 1.5 or 2 on your risk units and then you're just banking things too early well actually that's a that's a fast way to the poorhouse so what's the solution well we've got to think different and to think differently we gotta we gotta look at ourselves and how we are programmed to think right we got the ego we got the instinctual right this is just how i refer to them okay so I have a background of competitive skiing, uh, you know, uh, slalom, grand slalom, super G, okay, when I was younger. Okay, so for me, the flow state, I, I, I'm very familiar with flow state, thinking what it feels like, what it smells like, <laughs> it doesn't smell of anything, but what it feels like uh, and, and what my mind is doing, you know, all the visceral senses of that, okay. And 
this is really interesting for me to see then in other high performance people and there are so many commonalities all the time so we have the ego on one side right and this is the part of you that wants to get things right you know closed mindset you only play games that you know you can win or you, you're pretty sure you're going to win um you're not really open to growth because that's a risky part right you, you know you're, you just like to keep things safe right i mean nothing's going to go wrong if you keep things safe and within your circle of influence right and um, stubborn always needs to be right um and this is the part of you that thinks hold on i'm losing money as a trader uh, well if i if i work harder i know i'm doing eight hours a day in the desk if i do 12 hours a day in the desk maybe i'll stop losing money <laughs> that is that is just an even faster way to the poorhouse okay and you got to understand that's part of your ego making those sort of calls and that sort of talk in your in your brain right um, and you're ultimately the ego is always scared of being wrong okay and this is kind of what people talk about when they talk about traders you know having to be right and not willing to let go of the trade and uh, you know moving their stops averaging into losers uh, things like that but as we look at these uh, as we look at these the, the psychology over these sessions we're going to be doing we're going to be leaning more into the instinctual part right you know when i when i was looking at the johari principle those that that sector two and four really this is where we need to engage the instinctual okay of what what we don't know but we we can find out and then what we absolutely don't know and we're not aware of okay so this is where the, the inner search becomes uh, real if you like so this is the part of you that takes reflex actions you know I, I always use the the analogy of throwing a ball right you know if i if i'm in a room with you and you're on the other side of the room uh looking down at a piece of paper or something and i say hey and you turn around and i instantly throw a ball not very fast over at you you're instinctively going to lift your arm put your hand up and try and catch that ball there's no thinking there's no instructions there's there's no you know practice you just instinctively go to catch the ball okay that is the instinctual part of your brain and i think a lot of traders when they get into like a over trading scenario we'll get into this further in the next session actually and um, they get stuck thinking that every time they see the market move they have to have an instinctual reaction to sort of catch a ball in a way this is the part of you that you know guarantees your 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 your, your physiological survival fight or flight catch the ball you know every it, it's where you say to yourself this just feels right you know it's the hunter gatherer uh, nesting part of your brain okay um, so really we're going to be doing a lot more so sort of as we go into the next session on flow state but really we're you know what we are going to be looking at is ooda loop thinking right and this you know this will be interesting and we had a really great session in amplify we did a master class in this about um two months ago actually it was really well attended great feedback and so we're going to bring a bit of that into the next session um, a book to read uh, is the inner game of tennis it's a really small book and i guarantee you're going to be able to read it um, within a week absolutely okay so by a chap called timothy galloway or tim galloway you get it on YouTube or get it on Amazon, very cheap. Go down to your local library. You could probably read it in one sitting if you're a fast reader. Um, but this is really, you know, the book. Actually, Will Will De Lucy uh, put me onto this book. Thanks, Will. Um, really great book. So you know, really small. Pick it up, and it will help in the references that I have um, coming forward about self one, which is the ego, and self two, which is the instinctual for me, right? Um, so we need to evolve our thinking about losing and make it not so horrible a thing okay um, you know people who don't trade or don't take risk in a professional sense um, you know think traditionally about loss um, you know and for a good reason they do 
Um, but traders and risk takers think about loss in a totally different way, in a more matter of fact way, and loss and discomfort. Okay, and essentially, we have to evolve our thinking about being wrong. Um, thinking differently, we naturally have to avoid. Um, we naturally, sorry, we naturally do avoid um, discomfort and loss. Okay, but we need to sort of tame that, uh, right? And naturally, it's tempting to work harder. But we think that if we punch in the hours, that will yield more money. Actually, the longer you sit in front of the of the of the trading um, software and the ladder, the more you are exposed to the casino. And you may as well be just sitting in a casino. Okay, um, you know, if I'm not in a trade, I'm not working. Think about that. That is, that is wrong. If I'm not in a trade, I'm not working. That is not true. That is simply not true. Okay, and this is going to be relevant now when we come to my holy grail at the end of this video. Uh, the nine to five mindset doesn't belong here. Now you can you can trade, uh, you know, whatever hours you want. Okay, nine to five, fine. But the mindset of I go in at, at, into work at nine and I make money per hour until five o'clock and then I go home. Okay, well, with the world upended now over COVID. People are working from home and all, but I think everyone knows what I mean when I talk about this traditional mindset, okay? You gotta think like, it's okay to think differently. Just allow yourself to say that. It's okay to think differently, to you know, essentially become limitless in, in what can happen, okay? And really, this is it for me, okay? Willpower is not the solution. And you can't will yourself to trade better. It does not work like that. It does not work like that. You've got to accept uncertainty and, and just shrug it off. Uh, in the next session, we're really going to be looking at knowing your job, knowing the job of a trader. I, I don't think too many people address that. We're going to look at calming the self one and two. Talk a lot about that. Um, we're gonna, you know, need to wait. We essentially we need to think like this. We need to wait until we see a good moment to put our tools to work. Our tools, in this sense, as a trader, we're our capital, um, our software, and our screens and our connection. Okay, um, we need to continue absolutely with the right education. I've I've mentored traders who've been uh, trading for five years six years uh, uh, traders from two weeks to all the way through you know so um, you need to educate yourself about how you know especially on the fundamentals I have never in my life met or talked to anybody who learned how to trade in a month or two months and they were successful and consistent never um, you know, we need to know why and how markets move. And then we can see how we can interact with that and make money. Okay. So we're coming back, you know, to round off here on where we started. You know, luck is about getting dealt a good set of cards. Skill is knowing how and when to place the bets. Okay. Now, coming to my... Uh, uh, you know, holy grail, if you like, it's this. It's this. This is the holy grail. Right there. Okay. Trading is waiting. Waiting is trading. That is really what it comes down to. You need to be patient. People think, you know, oh, I've opened my ladder. Right, the market seems to be kind of moving up. Okay, boom, I'm long the market. And then, boom, they get stopped out. 10, 26 stops, whatever. And they think, huh. Oh. Okay. And so then they try to use smaller stops or wait a little bit. Um, and then they get into the market and then it messes around on them. And then, you know, they think, oh, okay. And then as the day goes forward from a morning session, then they start to see, oh my God, here's an amazing trade. But I've reached my daily loss and so I have to leave it alone. And they watch as that trade works out incredibly. And then it comes to the middle of, or just before the end of the day, and I think, if only I had waited for the afternoon session. 
I would have not taken those losses and I would have made all that money on the perfect looking trade that I saw. I mean, hands up, <laughs> how many of you lose money in the morning and make it back or make it back to flat or make profit in the afternoon then on those losses? So I'm going to leave it there and I really look forward to the next session. I hope some of this has, has rung true for people, it's connected to people, and that would be fantastic. Um, I'd love to get your comments on the video below. Um, reach out to me um, on YouTube or in the trading room in Amplify, and I'd be really happy to engage with you and uh, have a chat. And uh, yeah, please click subscribe if you like what you've been hearing and seeing. And um, yeah, have a great uh, month in these crazy markets coming up for the uh, general election. Uh, so or not the general, the presidential election. All right, I'll leave you there. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.